Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Declare a Play lesson at Trump's. Now, uh, Declare a Play in the Trump contract is quite different to Declare a Play in No Trump's. The principles for No Trump's, uh, the principles for No Trump's tend to be quite or very much along the same lines uh, on most hands. With No Trump's, quite often we find that the longer suits are always our first place of attack. There are various things with no trumps when it comes to controlling entries back and forth. But in, in trump contracts for declare a play, there's an enormous number of things to think about or consider. Now, I'll just grab our little annotation here, our little spotlight, and talk about a, a few things. I couldn't help, um, help myself but to mention this story and this was about a, a famous Italian world champion from many decades ago who was playing with uh, a novice partner and uh, his novice partner played uh, trick one and took the trick and sat there and thought and thought for quite a long time and finally the world champion couldn't help himself and he said uh, you've already made your mistake so that should teach us all a very valuable lesson and that is even before you play a card from dummy a trick one it's a very good idea to make some sort of plan plan of attack now i'm going to go through a few of those plans and if you take it bit by bit you can start to build some blocks towards being a better declarer and that may be things along the lines of when dummy goes down try to recognize what type of hand this is. Is this a hand where I should be playing trumps immediately? Is this a hand where perhaps uh, if I win the first trick, do I win that in dummy or do I win that in my hand if I've got a choice? And that's dependent on the general plan or the outlined plan that you're thinking about on this entire hand. Now, it's a, quite a remarkable statistic, but believe it or not, at least three quarters of the hands that you play in a trump contract shouldn't commence with declarer playing trumps as soon as they win the lead. More often than, than not, there's many, many other avenues that will get declarer more and more tricks. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through some of those plans as we go along here. Now, as we said, try to recognize what type of hand this is when dummy appears? Do I draw trumps first? Do I play my side suit first? Or do I delay drawing trumps in order to rough, or that is another word for trump cards in dummy? Why do we talk about trumping cards in dummy? Now this is gonna come up a lot in this, in this lesson. Dummy is typically the hand with the shorter trump holding. So hands when you have a shorter trump holding, if you are able to trump cards in that shorter trump holding, you're getting extra tricks. Compare that to trumping in the longer trump holding. If you trump in the longer trump holding, whilst you may have started with five trumps and perhaps dummy had three, if you trump in your hand, you've gained a trick, but you're down to four trumps. The converse to that would be if you've got a five, three fit, and you're trumping in dummy. You started with five tricks if you play them off straight away. But if you trump one card in dummy, that's an extra trick. And you still retain the five cards in your hand. So that's why we often look at the possibility of using dummy's shorter trump holding to gain extra tricks. Now that's one of the easier ways to gain extra tricks. There's other things we should do too is we should make this plan like a step-by-step -step plan. Now, you don't have to go too far into these plans because it can often be difficult to remember what will the play be for the first five tricks, but at least start by trying to remember the play for the first or your intention for the first three, perhaps even if you can get that far, four tricks. If you have an outline of the type of hand you want to play, and more often than not, that falls into place. Often you can say, I'll win the first trick in dummy, I will play this suit. Once I lose that trick, I will hopefully win the next trick in my hand and then play that suit. So these are the short amount of, of 
plans or the short plan that you should have on hand as declarer. Now, nobody can uh, remember every one of the 13 tricks they're going to play in order because that will often depend on what the opponents do against you. The other thing I've found that was very important in my early days of playing bridge was trying to remember whether a card was high or not. And this was an important thing because it was all about memory. My brother said to me, he said, if you've got top cards in the suit, for example, if you've got the ace and the king in dummy or the ace and the king in your hand, and it doesn't matter which one you win, try to win the lower one first because that will then allow you to remember that the higher one out is a winner. Now, I know that can sound quite basic, but for some people, that can be a really important step. Let's look at the idea of delaying drawing trumps. So look at this example hand we have here. We're playing in a spade contract. In fact, we've gotten to a four spade contract and the opponents have led a diamond. Now, one of the, of the uh, decisions you have to make that hinges on whether you try to play trumps or not early on will often depend on the quality and the length of your side suits. Now, I, this example here, the opponents have started off by playing a diamond. You can see that the quality and the length of your side suits is not wonderful. You've got king to five clubs opposite queen another. You've got ace to four diamonds opposite king to three. Now, they're two seven card fits. Eight card fits are the ones where you tend to have the greater control. And stronger eight card fits will be a perfect place to attack. But remember, if you're going to attack eight card fits, then you'll need to be able to draw out trumps first. Well, when I look at a hand like this, I'm a little bit uh, worried about where my tricks are going to come from. What I can see though, is that the short trump holding, and that is dummy in this instance, holds three trumps and a singleton. Well, if I can lose the lead early, I can gain extra tricks by trumping hearts in dummy when the opponents uh, are attacking either the diamonds or the clubs. And even if the opponents decide they're going to play trumps, I hopefully now have the timing to be able to void dummy and then if they've played trumps to be able to cross to our hand and then trump two hearts. So let's follow how the play would go and let's simply count the trumps. The opponents lead a diamond. Should I win the ace in dummy? Should I win the king in my hand? Well that the question is answered by what type of hand is this? Well, this to me looks like a hand where I shouldn't draw trumps, but instead I should play hearts, void dummy, and attempt to trump two hearts in the short trump hand in dummy. And what I'm going to do here, everyone, is to add up the number of trump winners we make uh, via that line of play. Well, in order to be able to trump two hearts from declarer's hand in dummy, I need to preserve as many entries as possible in the declarer's hand. That means when it comes to winning the first lead and the lead is the queen of diamonds, I'm gonna make sure I win the ace in dummy. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna win the ace of diamonds in dummy. What I'm going to do everyone is mark off on the screen the number of trump winners we have. At trick two, I'm playing a heart and I'm voiding out my hand in hearts. Now the obvious defense for the opponents will be to play a trump. So they're going to play a trump here and I'm going to win the uh, nine of spades in my hand. So when they play a trump, that's what I'm going to do, win the nine of spades. So there's a trick already in our trump suit. My aim, everyone, is to take seven trump tricks, the ace king of diamonds, and a winning club. So I've won the first trump. And now, because dummy is void in hearts, I'm going to play a heart and trump that in dummy. So we're up to two trump tricks. You've noticed that I've carefully preserved the king of diamonds in hand, so I play a diamond back to my hand, and then I play a third heart, scoring another trump trick in dummy. How many, do, how many spades do I have left, or trumps do I have left in my hand? Four. So I can add in an extra four tricks there. And that gives us a total of seven trump tricks. Well, we've got two diamond tricks, and we can definitely make a trick out of the, ace, the king and the queen of clubs, so that leads us to our 10 tricks. 
Well, that's a, a simpler example of taking roughs in dummy in order to increase your trick tally. Let's rub that out. Let's move on to other reasons uh, uh, in relation to, or decisions in relation to whether you should or shouldn't draw trumps. Now, if you were to look at a good side suit, everyone, a good side suit where, for example, you had a side suit something along the lines of uh, king, queen, jack, four, two, opposite, ten, six, three. Now that's our diamond suit. And we're playing in a spade contract. That diamond suit will be able to produce four tricks for us. But it can only produce four tricks for us once the opponent's trumps are drawn. So if my side suit in diamonds is like this, then my aim is to win the lead, draw as many trumps as I can to be able to extract the small trumps from my opponent's hands, and then play the diamond suit. Why don't I play the diamond suit early? Because when I've got eight cards in that suit, it's highly likely the opponents are going to be able to trump in with one of their baby trumps. So this is what I would call an example of a good, strong, long side suit. And that's why we wrote it in the notes there. Often the decision as to whether you draw trumps or not is often dependent upon how good your side suit is. So if you've got strong, long side suits, draw trump first. If you've got weak, short side suits, then you should look for another way to gain tricks. And that is, for example, cross trumping. The example that I gave you earlier up here, that was a case of cross trumping, meaning that we trumped our heart losers in dummy and eventually took trumps in our hand. Now, that was a good example of a hand where you had a shortage in dummy. But what about when you have no shortage in dummy? The actual shortage is in declarer's hand. Should you be playing hearts and trumping hearts in your hand? Well, there's often very little advantage in taking roughs or trumps in the long trump hand. If you had a look at the example that we've got here, if I did void my hand in hearts and took a heart rough in my hand, I would gain one trick, one trump trick. If partner was then, or the opponents were then to lead other cards, uh, such as a club, I would win the ace and dummy. And if I trumped another heart in my hand, I would have a second trump trick. But how many trumps would I be left between declare and dummy? Three in each hand. So the total then would only get to five tricks. Well, without trumping any cards in my hand, how many trump tricks did I start with? Five. All I've done there is simply lose control of the trump suit by trumping in the long trump hand and gain nothing. What should I do with a hand like this? The best play on a hand such as this is to, when the opponents take the ace of hearts and then switch to a diamond, is to win the diamond, draw three rounds of trumps, and try to pick up a trick through the length in clubs by playing the ace, the king, and another club. Now, if the clubs are 3-3 three, three, or one of the honors drops, I've got an extra club trick. So that will be a total of three clubs, one diamond, and five spades. So try to remember that. A shortage in declarer's hand is not necessarily a great advantage when it comes to gaining those extra tricks. Let's keep going. Making winners from declarer's side suit. On this example hand we have here, declarer's got a, a very good side suit here in clubs. King, queen, five times, opposite two small cards. Now, if you were to be able to combine the chances on this hand in a contract of four spades, and remember, in most of, with most of these hands, our aim is not to just take the 10 tricks. Our aim is to take more than 10 tricks if we can, get those important over tricks, improve our match point score. So with a hand such as this, if the opponents lead a heart, my aim is not to obviously trump a lot of hearts in my hand, but my aim would be to play clubs towards my king-queen to five here. 
it's actually a good idea to do this, especially if you have five two or five one fits. With five three fits, what happens is that the opponents will run out of cards and trump in. But with five two and five one fits, what we're able to do here is if we avoid drawing all the trumps out, perhaps the clubs won't break and we can trump some club losers in dummy. So that would be my aim on a hand such as this. Win the ace of hearts and immediately play my side 5-1 or 5-2 fit. So we play a club towards the king. If that loses to the ace, the queen would take the second round and then we would trump some of our losing clubs here with the king 10 three of trumps which are preserved in dummy because we haven't started drawing trumps so that's another example of trying to set up a long side suit in order for you to be able to gain extra tricks that way sometimes we're faced with uh, the possibility or the need to uh, decide between attacking a long side suit or trumping in dummy I've got an example hand when we go through the hands a little bit later that I've set up and that deals with a hand such as that and the decision we have to make of do I trump in dummy or do I play the side suit? We'll have a look at another way of gaining tricks. In fact, it's not necessarily a way of gaining tricks, but this is a way of throwing losers away on uh, side suit tricks or side suit cards prior to drawing trumps. On this example here, the opponents lead a heart. You take the ace of hearts and you're left with a heart loser in each hand. If you play a spade, the opponents will win the ace and they will take the winning heart. Now, they'll also take the ace of clubs and probably keep you to 10 tricks. But is there an avenue to 11 tricks? Sure, on, after winning the ace of hearts, why not play a low diamond across to your ace, a diamond to the king queen, and ditch your heart. And then you're void in hearts, and at that moment in time, you can afford to play a trump. So there are other moments uh, where you do delay drawing trumps that aren't necessarily anything to do with setting up a long side suit or trumping in dummy. This is a case of looking at the whole hand and saying, well, I can possibly throw away that loser early on. Let's have a look at other methods such as the cross trump. Let's, this is a classic example of one of these hands where you have to decide. I'm playing in a spade contract here. In fact, let's say I've gotten to four spades and I have to decide when my opponents lead the king of hearts, what is my best avenue to 10 tricks? Often it will depend on whether I draw trumps early or not. Well, the big question is, do you have a long, strong side suit? And the answer to that is not in hearts, not in diamonds and not in clubs, which means that you need to look for another avenue to be able to maximize your tricks. This hand looks like one of those hands where drawing trumps would be a, a, a very poor idea. Why? Because it looks like you can actually take 10 tricks by simply cross trumping your hand. And believe it or not, the higher the trumps you have, the better chance you have of this succeeding. So let's look at how this play would go. Uh, the opponents would lead a heart and we would win the ace of hearts at trick one. Ace of hearts, trick one. Trick two, we play a heart and we uh, trump it in dummy. So that's one trump trick. At trick three, we play the ace of diamonds. Yep, trick four. We trump a diamond in dummy. Now we're up to two trump tricks. And we simply go on our merry way and trump hearts in dummy, trump diamonds in our hand, and we have a total of eight spade tricks or eight trump tricks. Yep. And the ace of hearts and the ace of diamonds. And that would be our avenue to 10 tricks. So it is possible on some hands to simply not draw trumps at any stage and try to make as many tricks as possible by cross trumping the hand. Let's look at a few lesser known uh, avenues to gaining extra tricks. 
And one of those avenues is something that they call the dummy reversal. Early on in the lesson, I said to you, there's, you should never, in fact, the notes I say never, in fact, I should say rarely ever, start trumping in the long trump hand. Now, the term dummy reversal, what does that mean? When dummy goes down, it, it tends to be the hand with the shorter trump holding. If it's possible to trump cards in the long trump holding, you may be able to trump enough cards such that your holding in the trump suit becomes shorter than dummy's holding. And that's what we call a dummy reversal. I'm actually reversing the hands that become, uh, or the, uh, meaning I'm reversing the length of the trump suit. I'm now turning the longer trump hand into the shorter trump hand by trumping a number of cards in dummy. A very wise soul once told me that a way to recognize this as a possibility is, if ever a side suit comes down where dummy, the shorter trump hold hand, holds ace to four, and you in hand hold a singleton opposite there, that this may be one of those hands where a trump reversal uh, is possible. Let's look at how a hand like this would be played. The opponents lead uh, the, we're in a two spade contract, and the opponents, let's say, lead a heart. So they lead the ace of hearts, and then we're going to embark by trying to trump three diamonds in our hand. And if we do trump three diamonds in our hand, we'll get down to only two trumps left here. Now, some, uh, someone suggested here that perhaps you could play a club, you could play a club and then start trumping clubs in dummy. But if you do that, the opponents are probably going to play too many trumps on you. Now, especially if they've gotten off to a trump lead. And on this actual hand, that's what's happened. They've actually decided to lead a trump, not the king of hearts. So they lead a trump, and we're down to five trumps, in, four trumps in our hand, and two in dummy. So if we play clubs, the opponents will win the clubs and uh, lead two more trumps, taking all of the trumps out of our hand. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to start trumping diamonds in our hand. We've won the first trump trick in dummy with the nine. I'm just going to draw lines for each trump winner that we have. And then we're going to play the ace of diamonds and we're going to trump a diamond. Two trump winners. We're going to play a heart to the ace and we're going to play a third diamond. And we're going to trump in our hand with the ace of trumps. We're going to follow over to dummy with another trump. And we're going to play a fourth diamond and trump in our hand with the, uh, our second, uh, our last trump. And then dummy is left with two more trumps. That is the king and the jack. And that makes a total of seven trump tricks. And that seven trump tricks will go uh, into our uh, bank with our ace of diamonds and our ace of hearts. So that's what we call a dummy reversal. And the way to recognize it quite often is that if dummy comes down with ace to four in a side suit and you as declare a holder singleton, this could be a potential line of play. Let's continue on. The roughing finesse. Now, this is actually a reverse to uh, a simple finesse. If you, if you were in a spade contract on these, and these are simply the spade suit and the heart suit, if you were to lead the four of hearts and dummy was to play low, you could finesse the queen hoping that uh, the south hand here has the king. That would deliver you two tricks, the ace and the queen. After that, the king probably wouldn't drop because you're missing a total of eight of them. Is there another way to play this suit? Well, there is another way to play this suit, and that would be to take the ace and the king of trumps, leaving one trump left in dummy, play the four of hearts across to the ace, and then lead the queen of hearts through the imaginary king. If the north player holds the king and they cover it, you trump in dummy, 
and then your jack and your 10 become high. If the north player has the king and doesn't cover it, then you simply discard another suit in dummy. You then play the jack and the same situation applies. If north has the king and they cover it, you trump, the 10 becomes high. If they don't cover it, you discard in dummy. And then so on, and then you would lead the 10 and trump the last card over there in dummy with the last trump. Now, of course, this relies on the king to be in the north hand. But one of the best things about uh, trying a, a roughing finesse, is what we call this, is that you're not losing the first round of the suit by finessing the queen to the king. So this way, at least, if you play the ace, then follow up with the queen and discard a side suit, you may be able to achieve what we call a loser on a loser play. So that's what we call a roughing finesse, everyone. Let's have a look at this last one. It's called the principle of restricted choice. Now, we're often taught about eight, ever, nine, never. And that's in relation to when we have holdings, including the ace, jack, let's say, to five, opposite, king to four. If we have nine cards, as we do in this example, then playing the king first and, follow, and then following another card towards the ace and popping up with the ace even if the queen hasn't uh, uh, been exposed, that is the best line of play. But that's where the term of nine never comes from. It's normally best to play the ace and the king and play for the drop. But if we take one of the cards away and we're left with an eight card fit, the queen is unlikely to drop in two rounds. So in, for that, uh, in that possibility, with that possibility, you would take the king here, and then when you played another low one, if this hand plays low, your odds are better to finesse the jack than they are to play for the ace and the queen to drop. So that's where the saying of eight ever, nine never comes from. If you look at the holding that you have in front of you there, you have a nine card fit, but you're missing both the queen and the jack. Let's say, for example, you decide that, well, I am going to play the ace and the king and hope that the queen jack drop. But if you do that and the following situation occurs, ace, 10, nine, eight, seven, opposite, king, four, three, two. If we cash the king and both hand, this hand plays low, dummy plays low, and this hand, let's say, drops the jack. You have a big decision to make after that. Does this hand here, the east hand, hold both the queen and the jack? Is it likely they have queen jack doubleton? Or is it likely that the hand, this hand over here, the west hand, holds queen to three? Which is more likely? Queen jack doubleton or queen to three? Well, the eight ever nine never uh, law teaches us to play for the drop here. But in fact, the odds are two to one in favor of not playing for the drop, but actually playing to finesse against the queen on the second round. Why? Well, the only time that it will work to play small to the ace is if east holds both queen jack, doubleton. That's the only time it works. But with queen jack doubleton, this hand here has a choice as to which card they play. They could just as easily play the jack as play the queen. But when they hold a singleton, that's the only card they can play, which means that they have a restricted choice. That means that the odds are actually two to one in favor that once a queen or a jack has dropped here, then the likely layout of the suit is as follows, jack to three. So after winning the king and the queen or the jack dropping in the east hand, the correct play after that, when this hand plays low, is to finesse the 10. I've given you another example below of something that they call restricted choice. And let's have a look here, example nine down here. 
to make four tricks with this holdings best for each to cash a top honor. Uh, I like to play the queen. This is an interesting situation. Imagine your declarer here is east and your intention is to play a top honor in this hand. If you're playing against experienced players, they may play what we call count. So they may be able to tell you uh, whether they have an odd or an even holding. So when do they often give count? Not on an ace, but players often give count when declarer leads either the queen or the king, because they wanna be able to tell their partner how many cards they have just in case partner wants to hold up the ace. So with holdings like this, uh, if you lead the queen, there's a chance you may get what we call a true count signal. Either way, we're going to play an honor from this hand. So we play the queen and uh, uh, next you play and both car uh, players follow low. So queen, low, low, low. On the next play to the king, South follows with uh, the jack 10 or the nine. Now, is it likely that they, the north hand will have four cards? So south is followed with the 10, and then they follow with either the jack or the nine. Is it likely that the other missing honor is in the north hand or in the south hand? Well, again, it's the same scenario as here. It's called the principle of restricted choice. If two honors have fallen in the south hand, it's likely that the last missing honor card out of the jack 10 9 is in the north hand. Okay, everyone, so what we've got here is we've got some uh, hands set up. I'm going to stop the share of this screen. We're going to share another screen here. We share our computer and bring up some hands, some lovely play hands. Okay, now, in this instance, I'm gonna put you in the north seat and ask you, when partner opens one heart, what is the correct response? Well, you're definitely going to go to game on this hand, uh, but your possibilities are slightly restricted. You could bid two no trump, Jacoby raised, but what does two no trump suffer from? Two no Trump suffers from not having four card support. And it's very important if you are, uh, if you do play Jacoby Raids, that you make sure you have four card support for the suit that partners open. Why is that? Because Jacoby Raids is designed to start the machinations for a possible slam. Nine card Trump fits always produce more tricks than eight card Trump fits. So a Jacoby raise is out of the question. Somebody suggested a splinter. Well, splinters are exactly the same situation. They also require you to hold four card trump support. The other problem that we have for splinters is that 13 points is simply too good. Uh, Helen suggested Bergen. Well, the, all of the Bergen raises uh, involve uh, either limited hands with three card support but no game forcing hands with three card support. What you must do on a hand like this is you must delay a game raise. So with the point range of 13 to about 15 points, you simply change the suit, which is what we did. We bid two clubs and partner bid two no trump, showing a minimum balanced hand. Now you can comfortably bid four hearts and that's what we uh, refer to everyone as a delayed game raise. Okay. So let's look at this hand from Declarer's perspective. And we're going to play a card. And we're going to have to look now at what would be the best line of play. Well, dummies come down with a singleton. And I've got ace to three opposite that singleton. It's very tempting, always with those holdings, to trump cards, <coughs> pardon me, in dummy. <coughs> but if I do that, can you see what's happening here? I'll start trumping with high heart honors. And I'm missing the 10 8 of hearts. All that would do is perhaps uh, swap out my spade losers for now, trump losers. So that's not a line of play that uh, strikes me at first as being a good idea. However, 
Dummy does have a decent five card club suit. And I in turn hold only two cards opposite that suit. Well, my aim is whilst I still have trump control and dummy here, I think I'm going to start playing clubs towards the king queen. That's the plan. At trick one, I'm going to win the ace of spades in my hand. And at trick two, without touching trumps, because we can still use those trumps there as a buffer against the opponents deciding to play spades. And I'm going to lead a club. West plays the seven, I play the king, and that wins the trick. Well, that's good news, because that means it's highly likely that the ace of clubs is sitting in the west hand. So let's come back to our hand again via a side suit. And that would mean a diamond to our king or ace. And I play it to the king, wins the trick, and we play another club. Well, West now jumps up with the ace, otherwise they think they may lose it, which means that our queen becomes high. Well, good time to count the clubs. How many clubs have gone? Eight. How many do you have left in, in dummy? Three. So that means there's only two clubs outstanding. It looks like that they probably uh, are breaking 4-2 by the jack of clubs dropping here. But if I can trump one club in my hand as declarer, then the queen and the nine are both going to be winners. So the next play from the opponents is a diamond, setting up their diamond trick. And now I play a card across to dummy's heart suit, ace, with the full intention of doing what? Of trumping a small club in my hand and setting up two club winners in dummy. Well, now one of the two trump clubs is gone. The queen will take care of the other. And now I'm going to simply play a trump to dummy. Draw out the last trump. And enjoy my two club winners. And you see I'm throwing away spades in my hand. So those spades didn't actually need to be trumped in dummy at all. And I simply give up or I threw a diamond. I decided to do something different. Uh, and I give up the spade in the end game. So it's a total of 11 tricks. Now, what was the key to a hand like that? The key to a hand like that was to uh, go back to the original layout and decide whether I should be gaining extra tricks by trumping in dummy or simply playing a side suit with a 5-2 fit, like this one here, and retaining trumps in dummy to get back to that side suit. Okay, let's look at hand number two. Hand number two. Now, for those who uh, did attend my lesson on opening one no trump with a five card major, this would be a classic example of why I would open one no trump. I've got eight 15 high card points, if I found myself opening one heart on this hand and partner responding one spade, then I would be left with an awkward bidding problem. A one no trump bid would be a minimum 12 to 14 and a jump to two no trump would show more than a one no trump opening. That is 18 to 19 points. Well, this hand doesn't fit in with that type of action. So the best thing to do on this hand is the five, three, three, two shape means that I am essentially balanced. So I'm going to open one no trump. Partner bids two diamonds transfer to hearts and the bidding comes back to me. Well, that's amazing. I've got five cards in hearts and my partner's promised five. That means even if partner's transfer was on nothing, it means we have 10 trumps. If it turns out the partner's got, let's say two or three or four or five points, then it's, there's a strong possibility the hand could belong to our opponents in a spade contract. So either way, my jump to three hearts here will say to partner, partner, I love your heart suit. And this is what we refer to as a super accept. And I'm jumping to the three level because I'm bidding at least to the level of the number of trumps I hold. In fact, I've got five card support, but there's no need to jump to the four level. I'm jumping to the three level here to say, I accept 
or I super accept your transfer. We've got better than an eight card fit. We've got at least a nine card fit. Partner closes off proceedings by bidding four hearts. Okay, now queen of spades is led. Interesting declare a play hand. If we see this playing out, it looks like we may have a spade loser, the ace of hearts and the ace of clubs and be relying on the diamond finesse that is the king of diamonds to be on side to make our contract. Absorb this hand for a little bit, everyone. Have a closer look. Is that what we're going to rely on on this hand? Once two rounds of spades are played, the opponents will set up a spade trick for themselves. They'll also take the two round suit aces, the ace of hearts and the ace of clubs, and then we'll be left with finessing a diamond for our contract. Is that the best line of play? Or is there a way of eliminating one of those losers? Well, we certainly can't eliminate the ace of hearts or the ace of clubs. And we're a 50-50 proposition of the diamond finesse working. But have a look at the diamond holding here. You've got the ace, the jack, and the queen to three over here. If we simply give up a trick to the king of diamonds by playing the ace of diamonds and then the jack, that means that the queen of diamonds will become a winner. And our third round of spades, or what we thought was a losing spade, can be absorbed by the queen of diamonds. Now, that requires a couple of things. It requires us, A, to not play trumps immediately. It requires us to play a side suit. And B, it also requires us to make sure at trick one that we win the spade in the correct hand. So where should we win it? We should win it in our hand because we retain the ace of spades as our entry to the queen of diamonds. So king of spades winning and immediately play the ace of diamonds and the jack of diamonds not caring which hand the king is in. The king wins. You see now the queen's a winner. The opponents play the jack of spades. You win the ace. You do have a losing spade in each hand, but that is gone immediately by simply playing the queen of diamonds and throwing the spade away. Now, finally, we can play trumps. Now you see how many tricks we're into this, everyone? We are into one, two, three, four, five, six. This is trick six before we've started playing any trumps. And we, in fact, have gained the lead on two occasions. We play a trump, king wins, knock out the ace, and simply claim 10 tricks by losing one club, one heart, and one diamond. And that's the correct line of play because we didn't need to rely on the king of diamonds being on side. Okay, let's play another hand. Okay, partner opens one heart as south and you're sitting with this hand. You may notice that I've been pushing quite a bit in our lessons for people to consider the uh, benefit of learning Bergen raises. And we're going to do that on this example hand here. So with the north hand, instead of bidding two hearts, which a lot of players would do if they don't play Bergen Raises. It's clear, uh, I'm sure, as you play more and more bridge, that nine card trump fits often gain extra tricks. But that can depend on what partner holds. But at least it's good if partner's in a position to know whether we are pl they're playing with an eight card trump fit or a nine card or longer trump fit. So that's why Bergen Raises simply tell us to bid to the level of the number of trumps that you hold. There's a question here about Bergen raises always high card points, not shape. Yes. In fact, count your high card points with Bergen raises. Uh, uh, it will depend though, if you pick up, for example, a nine point hand with a singleton and four card support, then you are better than simply a Bergen three diamond bid. You would actually be probably a splinter bid. So, bear, 
uh, take all those things into consideration. There was a newsletter that I sent out last night. In fact, if anyone would like to be on our newsletter, please email. Um, uh, please email me and I can pop you onto the newsletter. And we deal with a lot about Bergen raises and splinter raises. So on this hand, we bid three clubs, six to nine points, four card support, and South jumps to four hearts. Okay, so let's look at uh, the declarer play on the six of diamonds lead. Count your tricks. One in diamonds, two in clubs, five in trumps, and a possible one in spades. Well, that's only a total of nine, even if the ace of spades is on side. But dummy also, this nine card trump fit, you can show the, see the great benefit of having nine trumps here, everyone. The nine card trump fit means that you have better control on this hand if you want to be able to draw trumps and be able to trump cards in dummy. So I can see here that as long as I don't draw out trumps, because if they're three, one, I'll be left with one trump in dummy. But how many losing clubs in my hand? Two. Dummy, however, has a doubleton king. I have ace to four. So my uh, first stop will be to make sure that I start trumping clubs immediately before I touch trumps. And in fact, I'm going to use the trump suit to come back and forth. At trick one, I win the ace of diamonds. And at trick two, I immediately play a low club to the king. Follow up with a second club to the ace. Now I'm going to play a third club. Well, I'm gonna use the trumps to come back and forth. So I'm gonna trump here with the 10 of hearts, everyone. I use a low trump to get back to my hand. And then I play my last losing club, trumping with the king of hearts, follow with the last trump, drawing out both trumps here. And then uh, I can guarantee my contract, even with the ace of spades, offside. I could have played a, I could have played an, a spade towards my hand, but I ran the risk of doing, of having, even with the ace of spades or the offside and the queen over the other side, of uh, having a trump promotion with the fifth club being played. That's why I didn't play a spade towards the king. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Let's look at uh, the last hand here, everyone. So here you are with the south cards. Uh, you've got a 5-5 five, five shape, and the rules are that we should always open the higher of our fives, so that's what we do. We bid one spade, higher of fives. Partner responds two clubs, 10 plus points, and at least four cards and clubs. You bid two hearts. Now, partner's two no trump bid. Forcing or non-forcing? What does it say about the unbid suit in diamonds? Well, you must, they must hold an, a stopper in the diamond suit to bid two no trump. And the other thing too is that uh, no trumps is always non-forcing. So if no trumps are non-forcing, that means that the two no trump bid is limited. In fact, it's, probably, it's only invitational, but it's natural, meaning that the north hand has clubs and diamonds covered, and uh, they are promising around about 11 points for this bidding. Tell me about the three heart bid. Obviously, it shows a 5-5 five, five shape, but the important aspect about the three heart bid is, is it a forcing bid or not? And here's the theory. If one player makes an invitational bid and the other player bids on, that means you are now in a game forcing option. I'll repeat that. So if one player makes an invitational call and the other player bids on, even with a bid that is below game, that bid says to partner, we're going to game and this is the rest of my hand. So the three heart bid says I'm five, five and thank you partner, we're, uh, we're going to go to either four hearts or three no trump. So partner raises to four hearts. 
The opponents lead the four of diamonds. <clears throat> what should be our line of play? As we said, five card side suits are a very attractive proposition. And in fact, you've got two here. You've got five to the ace jack of clubs opposite a singleton, but you've also got five to the king queen jack of spades opposite a doubleton spade here. Now, with the choice between each of those two suits, which suit is more likely to be set up through length? The king queen to five opposite two small, or the ace jack to five opposite singleton? Well, the ace jack to five opposite a singleton may take too many roughs in our hand to be able to set up the fifth club. So this suit here lacks a little bit of power. However, with king queen jack to five spades opposite two small, this looks like a suit that we should be playing, and we should be playing early rather than later because we may need to trump a baby spade in double. If that's the case, if we have decided that spades is the right suit to play, which hand should we win the first diamond in? With the king in dummy or the ace in our hand? So either have we lost the king of diamonds in dummy or the ace of diamonds in our hand? Which one? Well, if we intend to play spades, we should always play from weakness towards strength. So therefore, we're going to win the first trick with the king of diamonds in dummy in order to play a spade towards our king, queen, jack. Well, West wins the ace, and West continues with the diamond play. Okay, so it looks like you definitely must lose one trump trick because we're missing queen, jack, 10 to five. We could in fact be losing two, uh, but how about we now find out? And what we should do is retain a small heart in dummy just in case we need to trump a losing spade. So now we'll play a low trump finally to our king. And another trump, east shows out, interesting, to our ace, which means west is left with the high queen jack of hearts here. And now we're going to play the winning queen of spades. How many spades have gone? Eight. There's three left in our hand, that's 11, and there's two more, the 10 and another. It would be a, a grave error to play the jack of spades here, everyone. Why? Because if you did play the jack of spades, and I'll show you the west cards, west would trump with the jack of hearts, and then take the queen of hearts, taking your last trump out of dummy, and east would be left with the highest spade. So what you must do here, is play your losing spade, the low spade. And it doesn't matter what West does, if they trump in, they're trumping with a lose, uh, they're using a high trump on a loser from your hand. They then continue on by extracting dummy's last trump, just in case it is East that has the jack of spades. And then they force you in hand but you're absolutely fine from here because the jack of spades drops the 10. Six of spades is a winner. And you've got the last two tricks with the nine of hearts and the ace of clubs. So even there's a lot to take in there when it comes to declare a play in trump contracts. But it's very important to understand some of the, of the straightforward principles such as trumping in dummy. Do I trump? Is it a good idea to trump with the short trump hand? Normally, yes. But remember, there's other things to consider as well. And that is, should I be playing a side five card suit? Should I be delaying drawing trumps for all of this? And remember, one way to look at it is this. At least three quarters of the hands that you play in trump contracts rely on you when you gain the lead the first time as declarer to not play trump straight away. There's probably a better play than a trump play early on. How do we recognize it? Have a look at the side suits. Long, strong side suits equal, and that is side suits of at least eight cards normally, equal drawing trumps first. Yes, 
If your side suits are weaker and shorter, it means that you must look for other avenues to make tricks. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to open up the microphones now and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. There's a lesson that we have on uh, responding, uh, opening and responding to preamps, which is, I'm going to sort of turn your ideas of responding to preamps on their head a bit. You don't re re need to have 16 points to respond to a preamp. In fact, there's some hands with 16 points where you'll bid and some hands with 16 points where you'll pass. There's some hands with 10 points where you'll bid and some hands with 10 points where you'll pass. So see you tomorrow, everyone, and I'll keep the lines open. Thank you.